Hello, this is Pete. Welcome to the EmpowerCast iWork series, Keynote for Beginners. This is episode three. In this episode, we're going to cover the format bar, comments, presenter notes, and multiple displays. So here I have my Keynote theme chooser up. And hopefully by now you've had a chance to take a look and decide on some of your favorite themes. My favorites are white, black, showroom, industrial, and blueprint. For this demonstration, we're going to choose industrial, and I'm just going to make a slide size of 1280 by 720. For more about slide size, see episode one of the Keynote for Beginner series, where we spend a minute on the importance of slide size. So I'm going to click on choose here, and I got my canvas up now. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was the format bar, and the format bar is found directly beneath the toolbar at the top of the interface. If you don't see a format bar beneath your toolbar, you either have a previous version of iWork dating back before 09, because the format bar was a new feature in 09, or you just don't have it turned on. So to turn on the format bar, you just pull down the view menu and you say show or hide format bar, or shift command R is the keyboard shortcut. Before we jump into the format bar, I just wanted to spend a minute talking about the toolbar. The toolbar can be toggled on or off as well by using the little bean-shaped icon in the upper right corner. That'll collapse the toolbar, and you can also collapse the format bar. And that just gives you a bit more screen real estate to work with in Keynote if you need some more room. I'm going to bring the toolbar back and bring the format bar back. The toolbar can also be customized to give you quick access to those tools that you most commonly use. What you see here in my toolbar is the default set that Apple ships with Keynote and iWork. If I want to customize that toolbar, I can right click anywhere in the empty space here. I want to be careful not to right click on an icon, but just anywhere in the blank space. And I can choose Customize Toolbar. That's going to open up a large tray of various tools that are represented by icons and those icons can be dragged up to the toolbar for quicker access. So for making text bigger or smaller I can drag those icons right up to the toolbar. I have a print icon here that I could drag up to the toolbar and if there's something up there that I don't want there anymore I can just drag it off. Also available in the toolbar tray is a separator a space and a flexible space. So if I wanted to separate different tools to make them easier to identify, I can just drag a separator or a space and make this toolbar totally custom for the way I use Keynote. If you customize your toolbar and then you watch a tutorial, you may see the instructor do something that's different than what you've got on your toolbar. So to get back to the default set real easy, you can just drag that default set right here from the tray and drop it up on your toolbar and that's going to reset everything right back to factory settings. If you don't need icons in your toolbar and you'd rather just view as text, in the bottom of the tray here is a little pull down menu that allows you to change the way the icons are displayed. So you can toggle use small size on and off. That just makes the icons larger or smaller and you can toggle icon only or you can toggle it to text only. I'm just going to leave it at the default for now and I'm going to click done here to get back to the format bar. The format bar is a contextual bar that changes with the different activities you might be doing in Keynote. So if I'm dealing with text, tools to edit that text appear here in the format bar. So you can see because I have a text box selected, I've got the font pull down menu, the typeface, the size, the color, bold, italic, underline, line spacing, etc. All having to do with editing my text. If I put an object on the canvas, there's also various tools for editing an object like changing the color, the opacity, shadows and reflection. All that stuff is also available here in the format bar. Next I'm going to talk about comments. To put a comment on your canvas, step one is to pull down the view menu and be sure that comments is toggled on by clicking on show comments. Comments can easily be turned on or off right here from the view menu. 
So just make sure show is turned on. Once you turn on show comments, you can then click on the comment icon in the toolbar to create a new comment. Now that acts as a little sticky note that you can place anywhere in the presentation. Go ahead and type yourself a note, presenter notes. What's great about the comments is they serve as great reminders for when you're rehearsing for a presentation. Every good presentation deserves a rehearsal and the comments are terrific for reminding me, the presenter, that there's something I have to mention about a particular part of the slide. They're great because I can move them around and they serve as a visual reminder. Maybe I want to make sure I talk about this blue square. And maybe there's even certain statistics about the blue square that I need to study up on before I give my presentation. Well, I can put the statistics right inside the little posty comment and keep it right by my little blue square. So when I'm practicing my presentation, I've got all my notes close to the elements that they pertain to. Now a comment behaves similarly to an object where if I click and drag, I can drag it anywhere on the canvas. The guides apply to the comments just as they do objects. The only difference is I don't get resize handles when I click on a comment like I would do if I click on an object. See, I've got resize handles on my object, not on my comment though. However, to resize a comment, if you look at the hash marks in the lower right corner, that indicates that they can be resized by clicking and dragging there. So I can customize the size of the comment. Once I click on the comment, I can also go up to the graphic inspector and change the color to whatever color I need. Okay, so you can put as many comments on the canvas as you'd like in as many different locations and sizes and colors as you'd like. And it's really just a great tool to help you remember the information you need to present. The great thing about comments is when you play the presentation or you actually give the presentation in front of your audience, and I'll do that now by clicking play, notice the comments all disappear. The only thing we have here is the little blue square. So the comments do not show up in the final presentation. Now, if you want to temporarily remove the comments because you're doing some laying out and they're distracting you, you just go to the View menu, pull down, and choose Hide Comments. Now, they're not permanently deleted. They're just hiding in the background until you pull down the View menu and show them again. To actually delete a comment, you can use the little X in the upper right-hand corner, and the comment's gone for good. Now, we're going to look at a similar feature called Presenter Notes. To turn on Presenter Notes, I pull down the View menu, same place we turned on the comment, and I say show presenter notes. Notice presenter notes gave us this new margin down here at the bottom, and if I click inside that margin, I can start typing. One thing to be careful of when you turn on presenter notes, it's taken up some of my canvas, so I'm not looking at the entire canvas anymore. It's important to me that I always see the entire canvas, so I'm not missing any important details on the top, bottom, or edges of the slide. So I'm going to go here to my Zoom pull-down menu and select Fit in Window. That's going to make sure even though I have presenter comments showing, I can still see my entire canvas. Presenter notes, just like comments, don't show up in the final presentation. So when I click play here, the presenter notes and the comments will all be hidden from the viewers. I like to call out what I believe is the big difference between the two and that is the comments have the capability of being very specific to a certain element of the slide. So I can put this post-it note right on top of a particular element and make a note to myself that that particular element needs to be mentioned for this reason. Or if it's a statistic or a chart, I can put a statistic right next to the part of the slide that has to do with that particular statistic. So it's a much more targeted specific note for a component of my presentation. This is Pete from Empower Mac and I want to thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for episode four where we're going to work with themes and master slides. Thank you for subscribing and leave me a comment and let me know what you'd like to see covered. Again, thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for episode four.